Hello and welcome to our virtual lunch and learn today. We'll be talking about Rockwell Automation 48CR Code Reader. My name is Rachel Green and I'm the Digital Communications Specialist here at McNaught McKay Electric Company. And presenting for us today will be Lacey Diedrich, Industrial Controls Product Manager out of our Norcross, Georgia location. Out in the comments section, ready to answer your questions, is Austin Davidson, Automation Support Engineer, also out of our Norcross location. We'll have a Q&A portion at the end for Lacey to answer your questions in more depth, and we'll be getting started shortly, but we'd like to allow a few minutes for attendees to join us here. As you come in, let us know where you're joining us from in the comments section. I see we have Tom Nelson with us. Thanks for joining from Madison Heights. You can view recordings of previous virtual lunch and learns on our YouTube channel under the virtual lunch and learn playlist. And we cover a new topic every Wednesday at noon, so join us on your lunch break. For anyone just coming in, welcome to our virtual lunch and learn today, Rockwell Automation 48 CR Code Reader. Let us know where you're joining us from in the comments. We'll be looking for your questions as you have them in the comments section while our presenter Lacey tells us about the powerful capabilities of the smallest code readers on the market today. Hi Austin, hi Leanne, thanks for joining. Our specialist Austin Davidson is ready to respond to your questions in the comments section. And we'll have a Q&A at the end for Lacey to answer your questions as well. If you'd like to reach out afterward, or if you have further questions for Lacey, you can send us an email at macamaclive at mc-mc.com. Be sure to let us know which session you attended and we'll direct your questions to Lacey. We'll have that email address on the screen for you at the end of the presentation as well. Looks like we have a number of viewers with us now. So Lacey, let's get started. I'll pass it over to you. Thank you so much, Rachel, and thank you to everyone who's joining us today. Um, like Rachel said, my name is Lacey Diedrich. I'm an industrial control sensor and safety product specialist at Mac and Mac from the Norcross, Georgia office. Um, and then today we are going to be walking through the new 48CR code reader from Rockwell Automation. Um, the 48CR is the smallest high performance, easy to use ethernet IP enabled code reader on the market. And it's a pretty exciting product launch for Rockwell. Um, this isn't in addition to a current portfolio, this is a brand new portion of our portfolio. So now we can solve applications that we haven't been able to solve previously when it comes to reading barcodes. In my presentation today, we're going to go over um, an overview of the product, just briefly talk about some of the features. We are going to talk about some successful industry applications. We'll do a quick review of the um, WebConnect built-in uh, web browser and the add-on profile that allow two different sources of configuration for the 48CR. And we'll do a really brief technical overview um, of the various versions of the, CR, the 48CR for sale. So as I already said, the 48CR is the smallest industrial code reader on the market. It's really tiny. It's about one and three quarters inches by one inch by another one and three quarters inches. Um, it can read any barcode or QR code, 1D or 2D code, and direct part mark codes, which I'll refer to as DPM codes for the rest of the presentation. It can correctly read damaged or incomplete symbols that are the result of um, poor printing or scratches or even um, obstructions in front of the sensor. It supports Ethernet IP and can be configured using a built-in web connect, like I mentioned previously, or that add-on profile, profile available for Studio 5000. Additionally, it has an IP67 rated enclosure, a read range of up to 400 millimeters, depending on which version you choose. Um, it has a standard fixed, nope, standard fixed focus version and an advanced auto focus version available for sale. And over here on the slide, we just have some pictures of the various types of barcodes and QR codes, data matrix codes available um, for the 48CR to read. So let's talk about some applications that we've been able to solve using the 48CR code reader. Um, in, the in the automotive industry, consider the frequency of the use of DPM codes. Um, DPM codes are used for part tracking but they are notoriously difficult to read because they are printed directly or engraved directly onto metal parts um, and they have very low contrast. So the 48CR actually has onboard integrated lighting. There are 10 LED lights in the 48CR, 
which mean that we are able to um, prioritize and uh, specialize in making sure that we have the appropriate lighting and we don't have to add exterior lighting to an application. Um, so it saves costs and it saves setup time. So those built-in LEDs enable us to read these low contrast codes without adding additional lighting. Another example is with codes printed directly onto circuit boards. So in a scenario where we have really small codes and the codes change between product runs and normally we would have to then take a sensor off a line and reconfigure it and reteach it the code it's going to be looking for um, if we're switching between like a barcode and a QR code, let's say, um, or even different types of barcodes. Um, the 48CR can automatically reconfigure in between those runs. And um, additionally, there's an LED on the 48CR that can give a positive read indication. So we don't even need a computer in the area, not for setup during uh, line changes, and not so that we know that we're getting a positive read because that LED on the sensor itself is gonna be able to tell us if we're reading the codes appropriately and correctly. Um, so minimizing the amount of hardware you have to have out on the floor where we're doing the code reading. Everybody who's involved with the pharmaceutical industry knows that the pharmaceutical has really rigorous track and trace requirements for the products and the packaging that the products are shipped in to ensure customer safety. Um, the 48CR can match codes at high speeds and give those positive read indications that we were talking about in the previous example, um, where data matrix is needed to track and trace for products, like I said, with code on the product itself and code on the final packaging. Um, so this gives us access to be able to go in and solve, solve some of those pharmaceutical packaging um, track and trace applications. And finally, the 48CR can read multiple code types and automatically reconfigure when a symbol changes. So the 48CR has a really large window of interest, which we'll see in a minute when we start to talk about how to configure it. And therefore, because it's searching a large window of interest for a code, a code location changes because we're not dialed into like a really small area. We can, we can sense the change of where that code is and the camera can keep on going, keep on sorting, keep on reading and decoding the code. Um, so in a high speed application, we're not gonna struggle to find the code um, anywhere on the product as long as it is within the large window of interest of the sensor itself. So I wanna do a quick overview of the Web Connect. The Web Connect is an embedded web server in the product itself. We're gonna use an assigned IP address to could uh, to access the embedded web server in any internet browser tool. In a couple of minutes, we're gonna watch a video. In that video, we're using um, Google Chrome, but you can use any browser tool. Web Connect allows for easy device configuration with no additional software. So you're not going to buy the 48CR and get it and then have to go out to the Rockwell um, software download center the, and find software for this. It's just all in the, inside the device itself. Um, We'll talk about this when we're looking at the configurator, but there are a couple of different ways to create a configuration for the 48CR. Um, one of them is to upload an existing save configuration that you have on your computer. Uh, you can do that directly through Web Connect. You can also create unique configurations within a couple of minutes with some tools that make it pretty easy to sense um, the best settings for the, for the camera and get everything set up and running. I've mentioned this a couple of times, but it has a user-friendly interface, which you'll get to see when we show this video. And um, it has a really large live window of interest so that we can look for a code, a small code in a large area. Um, it has quick access menus and things like that so we can get to frequently used and adjusted parameters during setup. And um, it easily identifies successful decodes. So you can see in this picture here on the screen how we have a code and the code is outlined in green and the green is good. So we're making a successful read. It's giving us information below it about what that code said. Um, and it's giving us information about the read quality as well. So before we watch the video, I want to take advantage of being able to talk through some of the features on the screen so that when the video gets going, um, I can just highlight some of the things that we see as we're moving along. So up in this corner here, you'll see that this is a ghost menu. Um, it allows for quick access to stop the 48CR make changes to the window of interest. This right here, this big green box is the window of interest so the camera can see anything we placed here. Um, but using this menu here, you can adjust the size of that. There's also um, indicators, icons for um, an auto photometry setting. 
Ming Meadow will automatically detect the amount of light that the camera needs to give off with those um, built-in LEDs to optimize the lighting features. And if you have one of the um, advanced versions of the 48CR with the autofocus, the autofocus controls are here as well. Um, a tip is that with the window of interest, it does have a large window of interest. If you are doing an application at very high speed, um, one way to improve the speed of the reading is to make this window of interest smaller. And so we'll talk about that. Um, when we get into the video, I'll show you what button helps us um, optimize speed. But one of the first things we're always going to suggest is to decrease this window of interest if you are trying to um, achieve high speed. Up here, nothing fancy, nothing um, out of the ordinary. We have a save button, the button to push your settings to the device itself. Um, and then this gear, the settings gear here, um, will help us dial in and dig deeper in some of these parameters available out here in the main screen. We have a little menu here called rate, and the rate here gives us all of the display times um, for total read time, uh, capture time, decoding time, and lets us know. So if we are trying to optimize for a high speed situation, we have all of the data here and it's showing us consistently um, what those times are. And then this is just the output data menu down here. It's showing us information about what it's reading. Um, this here is set up so that it's reading these codes. It's telling us what the codes say. If we had an assigned output, if this reading this code was going to trigger the machine to sort this somewhere or back it on a specific palette, it would give us the output information as well based on how we set it up. Digging in a little bit deeper on the Web Connect, um, so one of the first things you have to do when you start to go and configure a setup is, well, let me back up a little bit. When you um, plug in and put your IP address in and bring up this menu, and you'll see this in the video, there are a couple of different ways to go about uh, completing a setup. Um, one of them is kind of a, an auto-guided walkthrough, and we are not doing that. We're not looking at this in this screen. In the screen, we're going through the setup on our own. Um, but even the setup on our own is really, really intuitive and simple to follow. So you kind of just follow the menus as you walk around the screen. But one of the first things you have to cite is, um, or specify is in this read cycle sequence. Um, you have to define how you want the camera to be working, how, what kind of cycle you want it to be on. So um, here you can see that there's an option for presentation. Presentation mode is um, displaying a green LED light on successful reads. Uh, so that you can you have feedback feedback on the device um, to know that it's reading. Continuous mode, uh, that would mean that as long if you select continuous, anything in this window is going to be read over and over and over. It could be new part new codes being added to this menu. If this was set on continuous mode here and these two codes were here, it would just keep reading these codes over and over. Um, things like triggered mode would mean that we have a photo eye up higher on the line. That photo eye would trigger the camera to read an incoming sensor. So maybe a, um, a crate passes by on a conveyor belt, passes that photo eye, it knows that something's coming down, it activates the camera to read and find the code on the box that's coming down. So basically a bunch of different um, cycle options here, depending on what your application is. In the same menu, also adjust the number of symbols that you're looking for. So you can tell the 48CR to look for anywhere from one to 100 symbols. Um, here we have two selected. There are two in the window of interest. If there was a third symbol here, it would still only be reading two of the symbols because we've asked it to read two. Um, but it's a drop-down menu. So if we needed it to read all three, if they were there, we can click this drop-down and select three. And like I said, anywhere up to 100 um, codes it can look for at one time. This decode menu over here shows the types of codes that the 48CR is looking for. Um, so like I said in my introduction, it can read any kind of barcode, QR code, um, 1D and 2D code, uh, DPM code. And the, the default setting is to um, maximize the number of codes that it's looking for. But another way to increase speed, obviously, is to eliminate any codes that it doesn't have to search for and really narrow down the scope of what the, the 48CR is looking for. Um, when it comes time to eliminate some of these codes, like let's say you don't have any uh, data matrix codes and you don't need to look for data matrix codes, you can come to the settings icon here. The settings icon will list every single type of code and that's where you have the ability to um, select in, 
to enable or disable the um, 48 CR for looking for those types of codes. Um, so you can kind of refine exactly what you want the application to be here and what you're looking for. This is also helpful if you have like a data matrix code on a, on a piece of product, but you don't want this uh, 48 CR to read that data matrix code. It's not applicable to what, what is going on at that point in the, um, in the manufacturing line. It's irrelevant, it's for, um, for downstream, but you happen to have barcodes on that device that you do want, then you can make sure you don't have data matrix selected so that it won't mess up the reads of your barcode. So just again, narrowing down the application and making it work for you. Um, I think we talked about this on the previous slide, but the green box around these is indicating that there's been a good read. The text below is telling us the symbol type and the pixels per element, um, that's called PPE. And then I think, let's flip over here. So this is going to be the brief video. So we've pulled up Google Chrome. We are typing in our IP address for the 48CR. Gonna bring up the WebConnect server. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is accept those uh, terms and agreements. And we are going to create a password and then verify that password um, if this is the first time set up of the device. And this is going to open up that screen we were just looking at and studying. So it's it's this easy. Um, right here is your window of interest. And I was mentioning there are the different types of setup modes. This is the assisted setup that would kind of walk us through and hold our hand uh, pretty specifically on the setup. We are gonna close out of that and go into more of the manual setup mode here that you would access by clicking this button. We talked about setting your cycle type. Um, for the purpose of this demo, we're gonna have it set on continuous. It's turned on the camera. You can see we're looking at a box with a bunch of different barcodes. I mentioned in the previous slide that we have the ability to select how many of these barcodes we wanna be looking at. Um, and we have the ability to adjust our the size of our window of interest. So that's what we're doing here off of this menu button is making that window of interest a little bit smaller and therefore speeding up um, the read speed. This sunshine button is that auto photometry setting uh, to maximize and uh, create the optimal lighting for the application. And this camera button is the autofocus. This um, button that I call the graduation hat is actually called the training mode. And in training mode, the camera itself will optimize your photometry and your um, autofocus so that it detects what's going to be the best settings for the camera to work. So really, really simple to use and get set up um, you're not out there adjusting the lighting. Uh, here we are adjusting the number of barcodes we're looking for. So you can see we went from seeing one barcode, now we can see two. We're selecting a third, we're now reading three barcodes on the screen. And like I said, we can maximize this all the way up to 100 barcodes. So depending on if you have 100 um, small cartons in a big box and we can see the codes on all those, we could read them all at once um, if we set this up appropriately. Uh, let's see. So we're going to click on the settings icon over here. It shows you some basics, uh, you know, where you go to save the uh, files. You could change the language. Um, and then we're going to go into some of the advanced settings here. So these are the camera settings. Here you can see uh, the specific readouts for your exposure. You can see the exact measurements of your window of interest. Um, you have your focus distance set in here. Um, and you can adjust settings from there as well. This is the communication setting, so it's showing us our IP address. And then in here, this is what I was talking about earlier on this decode menu. This symbologies menu gives us every single type of code that we could be looking for using the 48CR. And this is where we can enable and disable the various codes that we want to read or need to be able to read in that window and the types of codes we absolutely do not want to be able to read in that window. Um, and like I said, that will speed up the reading and it will enable you to capture the right data uh, for the application at that point in the manufacturing process. Um, you've noticed throughout the demo that uh, the read time is continued reading. We've continued to get output data as long as there are codes in the window. Um, and that's because we selected continuous and it just kept reading all of those codes over and over again, because that's what we asked it to do. So in addition to the um, built-in WebConnect, there is also an add-on profile available for Studio 5000. Customers using the 48CR in conjunction with Raffle controllers will find this add-on profile, profile, nope, add-on profile that is available for use in Studio 5000 to be very useful. Um, an exciting thing about using the add-on profile 
is that um, with its integration in Studio 5000, you have the ability to enable automatic device configuration for the 48CR. So like a lot of Rockwell products that have ADC available, if the sensor, the camera, the 48CR itself needed to be replaced um, out in the field, we were you would be able to replace that with a new version of the 48CR and push all of the settings to that new version, minimizing your downtime and reducing the need to go ahead and set up that um, fresh out of the box sensor completely from scratch. We can push all the old settings to it. So that's a great time saver um, when you have a, a device failure and you need to get it replaced quickly. And then this is going to be a short video um, showing a side-by-side -side of the Web Connect that we are just looking at. So you'll recognize all of these menus. Here we're reading a um, Rockwell sensor box and it's got a single barcode on it. And I, we're just side by side with the um, with Logix and we'll show the add-on profile and then the controller tags um, that you see so that you can have an understanding of how the red barcode appears in the controller tag. So I'm gonna hit play on this video quickly. It's not as flashy as the last video, but you see over here, it's a barcode. It's reading that barcode continuously. It is looking for one symbol. Um, these numbers here are the actual barcode readout. Um, this is the add-on profile over in this window within Studio 5000. It's giving you the information on the module itself. It's showing us the parameters we can adjust in the configuration here. So not, not a super long list. There are plenty of Rockwell devices that have a much longer parameter list here. Um, but what is really valuable in this video is coming over here to the controller tags and opening up um, what it's going to look like if we were to want to know what this barcode read looks like in here. So um, you can see down here, it's noting that the character length of the barcode is 14 um, characters long. And then you have the readout on the character one slot is zero, character two slot is zero, character three is eight, and so on. And that gives us the actual barcode readout. So it's just helpful to have an idea of what this information that's a little bit more intuitive, a little bit more visual in the Web Connect looks like when we pull it over into Logic. Um, so that's that demonstration there. And I promised I would follow up and try and talk a little bit about tech specs um, and what is available. So the 48CR is a family of products. Within that family, we have seven catalog numbers. There are three advanced autofocus options and there are four standard fixed focus options. Um, you would select a part number if it came down to it based on the application, uh, the sensing distance needed, the speeds of the code, how fast they'll be moving past the camera, read rates of the code readers, et cetera. Uh, but that is something that we would be happy to help with, um, happy to narrow down as well. And finally, I guess this is kind of a shameless plug, but I appeared on the McNaught and McKay podcast um, with Austin Davidson discussing uh, this barcode reader, the 48CR, um, and comparing it to Rockwell RFID options and just talking about product tracking in general. And so I know that Rachel went ahead and linked this episode 15 product tracking in the um, notes for this YouTube, YouTube video. So they're out there if you want a direct link to this episode to learn more um, and dive a little bit deeper into product tracking. Additionally, if you just want to listen to more podcasts and see um, the podcast topics that we've discussed in the past, feel free to visit podcast.mc-mc.com to um, peruse the list and see if there's anything out there that can help you. And with that, that's all I think I have. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions if you have them. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Lacey. That was great. We did have one question. Um, it was during the uh, add-on profile video that you were showing. Chris asked, um, and the question's very short, so it's just Ethernet comms. I'm guessing Ethernet communications. Um, I don't know if you want me to ask him to elaborate on that question. I can tell you that it is communicating over Ethernet. If there is more question to that, feel free to type it in. Um, but it is Ethernet, and it's Ethernet IP enabled. Wonderful. Chris, if you do want to follow up on that question, or if you have more questions, um, now that you know that answer, feel free to reach out to us at the Mac and Mac Live at mc-mc email address there. Um, or you can drop your follow-up question in there right now. We'll give just a few minutes for anyone that does have follow-up questions for Lacey. Um, I'd like to remind you that you can always reach out to us at that email address, even if you're watching this as a recording after we have ended this go live.
And that's great. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any follow up questions at this time. So I'd like to thank you, Lacey, for this wonderful presentation. Thank you to Austin for being our resource out in the comments. And thank you to all of our viewers with us today for your time. We hope this presentation was informative and engaging for you. And please remember to subscribe to the McNaught McKay YouTube channel for more industry content like this. We look forward to seeing you live again soon. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.